Hi everyone, PV here and welcome to today's YouTube video. In today's video we're going to be playing the day one of the Arena Open. And for those who don't know, the Arena Open is a pretty cool tournament that happens rarely on Arena. And as the name says, it's open for everyone. And the way it works is, you pay an entry fee and in gems or in gold, and you can either play a day one that is best of one or a day one that is best of three. If you play best of one, you need as a record of seven and two or better. So you play until three losses or seven wins uh, to qualify for day two. And if you play best of three, you uh, have to have a 4-0 record. So you can't have any losses, you need four wins before you get any losses. And then if you get either of these records, you qualify for day two. And on day two, it's always best of three. And if you get seven wins before you get two losses, you get $2,000. If you get six wins before you get two losses, you get $1,000. And if you get less wins than that, uh, you get some some gems, and which are usually more than the entry fee. So you have to do really badly on day two to not recruit your investment. Uh, the, the caveat is that you can play day one as many times as you want. So if you play and you do badly, you can just fire off again. Obviously, you have to pay an entry fee again. Right? It's not free, uh, but it gives you the possibility to just fire as many bullets as you want to make sure you qualify for day two. And this means that you, we're usually, or I'm usually, trying to pick a fast deck. Uh, because you know if, I wanna, if I'm going to lose, I want to lose quickly so that I can fire off another bullet and try to qualify again. That This is why uh, I'm playing Mono White Aggro. Uh, and I'm also going to play Best of One. I think playing Best of One in the day one of the win opens is much, much better for a variety of reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video because I will do a more comprehensive video on it, exploring all aspects of it. Uh, before the next arena open, I didn't have time to do it for this one, but for the next one. But suffice to say that Best of One is better. Uh, I believe. And I always play day one and best of one, and I'm gonna do that again here. So we wanna play best of one, and we wanna play a fast deck, because again, if I'm gonna lose, I would rather lose quickly so I can play more. And if I'm gonna win, obviously I would rather win quickly as well. So we're gonna play mono white aggro. But uh, because we're playing best of one, I think there are some adjustments that we have to make. This is Ray Sato's list. Uh, it's actually the list that three Japanese players play at Worlds. I think it's a good list. Uh, but I'm not really gonna spend much time on it. Uh, because again, I don't need the, the last minutia to be right, right? But it is best of one, so people play more aggro decks. So we have to change our list to reflect that a little bit. So this means that, for example, I want Skycliff Apparitions in the main deck, maybe more than Elite Spellbinders, right? Because the Spellbinder is better versus a control deck, but the Apparition is better versus an aggro deck. So, oh, sorry, this is, this is weird. This this screen is. Wait, why isn't this working? All right, there it is. Uh, so well, obviously we don't have a sideboard, right? Because it's best of one. If we want, we can have lessons and stuff. But uh, we can we can remove the sideboard altogether. And then I'm probably gonna play like three operations main and cut like three spell binders. Uh, probably cut a radiant. Radiant is not bad versus some aggro decks either, uh, so it's fine to have some. And then like, cut an Adeline maybe for the other apparition. And the other card I want to add is a Legion Angel because you get free sideboard, right? So uh, I, I can just put three Legion Angels in my sideboard, and it doesn't cost me anything, which I think makes this card quite a bit better than it is in Best of One. Sorry, best of three. And I also want to make my deck a little bit faster, I think. Like, I want another portable hole, uh, because again, anti aggro and uh, just having a curve. Stone Binder Stramiller is probably going to be a bit better because we're cutting some cards that don't trigger it for cards that do trigger it, right? Uh, like, we have the, the Operation. Obviously, we cut the Spell Binder, which works with it too. So it's not just adding four Operations, but we're also cutting some number of other threes. This Spell Binder can probably go. And then I can probably cut. The other Raiden, maybe. I think this seems like a reasonable starting point for what I'm going to play. And again, not really going to uh, focus too much on the details of this deck, because this is really just supposed to be a deck that I'm going to try to get seven quick wins, right? Just to qualify for day two. And day two is when you have to really think about it, because that's when you cannot afford to lose, right? So I'm going to have uh, this for now. And then we'll reassess depending on how it goes. Um, but by the time you watch this video, the arena open will already be done. So there's no point in focusing on this deck list specifically. So I'm gonna label it arena open why we 
Uh, what is important is the thought process, right? So the next year notebook, you can replicate it. And the thought process is that cards like Legion Angel get better and that you have to build against aggressive decks more. Because oh, it doesn't mean that you only play against aggro decks, right? You will play versus other decks for sure, but you play versus a, a much wider range of aggro decks. Arena open. Oh, is it traditional? No, right? Because traditional for arena open is best of one. <laughs> but I guess, okay. So I don't have 20,000 gold, but I do have 4,000 gems. So. Yeah, so I'm going to select the arena open deck. Uh, yes, submitted. And here you see I have to get to seven wins to get this day two token before I get to three losses. So once I get three losses, I'm eliminated and I get prize depending on how I did. So if I get six wins, I get 1,600 gems, which is much less than the 4,000 that I had to pay to join. But if I get seven wins, I get 2,000 gems. And on day two, there are also prizes regardless of how you finish, right? So even if you go 0-2 on day two, you're getting some prizes back. So basically, if you day two, you're almost certain, I think, to, to at least break even. This line is okay. Uh, obviously, we'd rather have a one drop or on the draw, but we don't have that many one drops. And like portable hold doesn't really count as a one drop on the draw versus a lot of people. Like versus some people, it will, right? Versus the, the mono white mirror, it will count as a one drop, uh, sorta. But versus mono green, they don't even have anything that they can play on turn one that you get to, to remove, right? So hopefully they're playing an aggro deck of some sort. Nope, but I mean, Sky Play Vaporation is still gonna be okay versus. Uh, I tweet and Shambling Gast and stuff, right? Obviously, Ray Dane and, and Lee Spellbinder would have been a lot better. Oh, never mind. So, do I want to play the Luminarch? I probably just want to play the Luminarch here, I think. I don't like Getty going. Because in turn three, I want to play the Apparition, probably? On the Adversary. Or whenever three got there. Yeah, I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna lose a lot of life, but I think it's fine. My next turn, I can play the adversary. This will give me. Uh, like a lifeline creature, and uh, this this might grow into a four four, which is big enough to block the the Sedge more witch. Token. Okay, what do I want to bump? Probably the adversary. But I don't want to attack. I don't want to trade with their adversary. Next turn, I can kill it and attack with everything. All right, then I'll have much better attacks. Hopefully, they don't have anything. <laughs> this, my opponent's deck is a relatively smart choice for best of one, right? Because people are playing more aggro decks. So, you know, black makes sense. But at the same time, the games that you win can take a very, very long time. Also, the games that you lose. So, like, I might get to finish my, my tournament and while well, there are match three or whatever. So, Obviously, if you care about maximizing uh, value, right? I guess I can play the Sun Gold Sentinel to bump that. Okay, I'm gonna kill this. If you care about maximizing value the most, then you might not want to play whatever is fastest, you might play whatever is best, so you don't have to queue again. But since my my main worry right here is, is time, I just want to get this done to be able to play on day two, which is the actual tournament. Wow, that's a bit awkward, because like they didn't get the clue, which I th would think they really want, but... I mean, if they have blood in the snow for next turn, I'm super dead, right? I don't think I can really play around that. Well, we should have put a counter on one of my creatures to put them to four, which meant like Faceless Haven would, would be lethal. I was thinking about this play before they played this Deadly Dispute, which meant they wouldn't have a token, right? They were only on 4 mana. But they definitely should have just sacked the Night Witch for this. They should have just let that, this Fateful 
Absence Resolve. Yeah, I should have put a counter on something else because then being at four is so much better than being at five because then anything is lethal, right? But right now, not everything is lethal. So I can, if I put a counter in here, this, this will be enough, right? So I have a three, a four, and a five, so I can just pay two and choose black and then they're dead, right? <laughs> So yeah, this is why I like this this super hybrid decks because even when you get pairing us the bad match, but I think it was a bad matchup, you can just win, right? And again, if you if you don't win, you just get it done very quickly and you you move on, right? Especially when you can afford to have two losses, right? Not a great hand either, but no hand on the draw is going to be great. Like, I think you just have to accept that, especially in this best of one where everyone has like a reasonable hand at least. Like in best of three, this would be a better hand. In best of one, people just goldfish you. And being on the play is so, so important. I think I'm going to attack and make a token next turn. Assuming I'm allowed. Ugh. This is so bad for me. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Alright, All right, I'll allow that. I mean, should I attack and make a token? Should I just play on Binder Familiar? I think attacking and making... I mean, I'm gonna have to attack, right? Like, that thing is gonna trade. Like, I might wait to play the adversary, but then, like, I'm not gonna get the token anyway. Right? This, at least, I, I got rid of that, and I have the 1 1 to bump with the adversary anyway. So, they didn't wanna take that one first when they were stuck on two lands. That's bold. Now, I'm not gonna attack, because now I'm not getting anything in return. Like, now I can wait a turn and play the adversary. And obviously, I would rather draw a spell at one point in my life. That would be great. But yeah, th this is almost certainly like they took a card that did nothing, which is either looting or getting a land when they were stuck on two lands, right? So this wasn't optimal behavior, I would say, but they're still in pretty good shape because I don't have anything. So this doesn't work with tokens. unfortunate because if it did I would get rid of a blocker like assuming they kill my adversary here right I would get rid of a blocker and and put my familiar which pretty, pretty good spell binder or radiant would have been much better here <laughs> and I can I can skyclave operation that but I don't know if I really want to do that oh my god Okay, should I have attacked with the 1-1-2? One, one, I didn't really want to trade, because I might like draw another adversary or something. I don't want to operation this so they don't get a land, because if they kill it, they just get a 4-4, four, four, which is kind of worse than a land for me. Yeah, I mean, this game, we, we can't win. We drew 8 lands. Like, we're, we're just never going to win, unfortunately. My lands. And four spells in a mono white deck. Like it's it's impossible to win. I think it's gonna animate this and attack and see what they do. Yeah. 
If they don't block, I can apparition the chariot. If they do block, I don't mind this. Like if they just play red and seven here, I'm gonna see because I can't play. Even another chariot would honestly be enough. Like I, I I'm pretty dead here. I, I, there, there's no way I can win. I think. So we're just gonna see what they do. And... Well, that really is just nothing. Do I want to get the chariot? I feel like getting the chariot might just give them like a boost that they need. I'm not gonna do it. Talents, not that anyone's going. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could always just like top deck a mall and get him for the last points of damage. It's kind of tricky. I mean, they're really not doing anything. Though those things are big. What is this doing? Oh, because they each pump each other, okay. So how do I win? Like, if I do get the chariot here, I put my thing and I get an extra 2-2. Like, I'm attacking for 6 here, which is not enough to win the game next turn. If I don't play the apparition. I think I have to do this. I could exile nothing. Because then I attack for 7. Oh no, but if I don't exile nothing, I don't get the bonus. So I have to. Alright, this is a bit awkward. So I can I can beat a removal spell, because I'm attacking for 7. I can't be removal plus something. Or I can be one creature. I can be one creature or one removal. I can't be two creatures. <laughs> and I can't beat two removals. Or one, one and one. I can't beat that. I can also be more skeletal swarmings. That's what I can definitely be. So yeah, I would I would rather not getting them their a 4-4 four four if they killed my Skyclave apparition, but I have to exile something for the familiar. So because they have to be at exactly seven, right? If they're at eight, it doesn't work. Well, so far I'm beating that. Does have nothing else? I mean, this doesn't really matter right, which one I do. We won. Okay, that was really unexpected. <laughs> really, really unexpected. But I like how I played. I feel like if I played differently, I would just have lost, right? Or potentially would have lost. So I'm glad I didn't get desperate and just mentally give up. Okay, that's not true. I did get desperate and mentally give up. That happened on like turn three. I've been defeated since then, but it was good that we won. We go first. This hand is again kind of bad, but this Legion Angel could be very good because I have two removal spells in my hand, right? So I have a slow hand, like a, a grindy hand. So if I'm playing something like the Mirror, which I am, then this is actually going to be quite good. It's like I'm just going to go removal, removal, Angel, bam, bam, bam. I was prob I was debating playing Maul here, but now that I drew Luminarch, this is such a a clean curve. This is pretty bad. Like, I, I needed to play either the angel or two spells here. I guess I could just... 
I could. Do I want to play them all? I'm. This is not a race that I'm going to win if they have anything else. Eh, let's try it. I'm gonna attack because if they have any removal, like I waste so much, so much racing potential here. Yeah. yeah. Not drawing a land this last turn really destroyed me. Also this turn. Take seven. So I can play an adversary and make, put a counter on it. Or I can play it for two. Or I can play a big adversary. I'm dead to anything. Right? Like, I, I can't beat a spell. Really. I don't think. So I think we just do this. Maybe I don't do this and I like I let them attack. No, I think I should. Like I can't beat anything, right? We've we've established that I I think I'm dead to anything. This was disappointing. I felt like this was kind of my game to lose, and I I did lose, but my draws were so awkward. Zucker because now they just attack with the familiar like and their draws just lined up so well versus what I had. They should attack with just huh. Do I block this or do I block the I'm putting the counter here because if they have another adversary or a Luminarch, I want this to trade with their adversary. But like, they have all spells in hand, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard. Yeah, there you go, see? Very smart. Now I think I have to pump the angel. It's tricky because if they ha if they have a land, they pump their their dragon and then I lose. But oh okay, yeah, they can't pump. They don't have the luminar anymore. No, it, it is big. Yeah, it's gonna be big. So if they draw a land, I lose. But if they don't draw a land, they just attack and I have to block with the legion angel. So I think I just have to hope they don't have a land. But if they don't have a land, they're gonna have spells and I can't put spells either. So how do I win? <laughs> I think this is the best and just hope they don't have it. Because like now they just play a land and attack with the cave. I mean, I think I said if they attack with the cave, I block and we're just back where we were. And I got a counter next turn, so I could win. They can't attack with both, because then the land will die. So like next turn I can play the engine and put a counter on it. So I think this was right. Because if, if I do it the other way, they just attack with both and then I'm just it slides out for me, right? Obviously, I'm dead to a, a number of things at any point, right? And they have two clues that they can use to draw cards. Like, now they can even attack with this Faceless Raven and play something else, which is pretty bad for me.
Yeah, they should put a good adversary. I need to draw one drop now to not die. Oh no, I'm just gonna dead. Alright, this was a relatively... Uh, it wasn't really a close game. I feel like me breaking there... It wasn't just that I... Oh, I did draw one drop. But I'm, I'm dead anyway, they had this. Me breaking there was, like, it was really bad because... I could only play one spell that didn't matter. Like, they were also stuck on three lands, but they had meaningful three drops to play. And I was stuck on three lands and I had a four drop and two two drops in my hand that didn't really trade up. And my opponent's three drops were good because they had the familiar in there. Uh, and they just added a, a, a body to play, right? I feel like if I draw a fourth land early, I win this game for sure. But it was just too awkward. My, my draws were just too awkward to, to match up with what my opponent was doing. Which is pretty unfortunate because I wasn't to play in the mirror and that's like exactly where you want to be, right? But yeah, I don't know if I should have played differently or what does this even do? Not much yet. Could have made a token instead, but given that I have two of them, I think I would better just get the pressure going. I could play. I could just play Adeline and attack with Adversary on this. Or I could play Portable Hole and, like, Sunbite from the and Portable Hole and get a 2 2, or just activate Usher. I think this is best. And if they want to block, then it's whatever. Like, if they play the 2 4, they gain his life now. I can still just get the Valkyrie and then I have, like, relatively good attacks. Has to. Okay, I did not expect that. It's not gonna be very effective. <laughs> It is much better than, much worse for them than a removal spell, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's basically a wrath or bust here. Wait, what? Okay. <laughs> If your opening hand doesn't contain any of your plays, consider so you're taking a mulligan. This is true. Good advice, Magic Arena. Well done. Pretty good hand. Uh, good hand on the draw, too, because I have the hole for their, their two drops, so I can go like this, this, this. You know? No, oh, no. It's a control deck. I'm dead. I do think control decks are going to be the best to play. And there's things for... Oh. Okay, this might actually be okay. I need to draw, like, at least spell minor next turn, except I don't have it in my deck. But it would be a great card to draw. <laughs> If I did have it. So well, the dream is they play another egg and I draw Skyclay by the way. And they miss a Lindro. Wow, that would be so great. I, mean, I think I just this right Miss. Miss, miss, miss. Do I attack with my face size haven? Or do I just play adversary? Now nah, I'm gonna play adversary. It's 
So I have 12 damage in next turn, so if they just play Gold Spend Dragon and attack, they have to have something else. Looks like they do. Right. I'm mean, still attacking for six and killing their thing. So like I'm not that bad shape. Oh, this is a clue. I thought it was a treasure. I got confused. So that I can't even play Epiphany now. I need to draw like Sun Gold Sentinel. That'll be good now. That'll be medium. So if they brick, I win. That's good. Yeah, I think Blue Red Anti Creature is just probably the best deck to play. But again, I really want to be fast. So now I activate Haven to kill it. Okay, that was unexpected, but appreciated. Okay, good hand. Strong curve. Being on the play, having a one drop into a Luminarch is always pretty good. Like, versus anybody, whether they're aggro or control. Unless they just shock your Luminarch, like, go, you know. Yeah, versus Mono Green, the start is pretty, pretty unbeatable. I'm not gonna say unbeatable because I'm gonna lose, but like, it is a pretty strong start. So do I want to make this a 4 so that... Yeah, I do, I think. Like, if they play Troll, I'm just gonna attack through it. With the adversary as well. Ooh, this is good. This is even better. It's like, now they're gonna grow, anyway. Yeah, that was a perfect drop from me in on the play. Like, in, in this matchup, it's really unrecoverable <laughs> from my opponent there. That matchup is extremely play draw dependent. I think like Mono White versus Mono Green. Because you have certain cards, like Mono Green starts on two, right? Uh, but then it has the stuff like the, the fight spells that it can play for one mana to catch back up in the game. So it plays one spell on turn two, but then it can play two spells on turn four, right? Whereas Mono White starts with a spell on turn one, so it gets off the battlefield to the battlefield faster, but then doesn't have uh, a card as powerful as like Blizzard Brawl later on. So if Mono Green is on the play, it can, you know, you get to play your card before they they even attacked you. Whereas the other way around, like sometimes you play your first creature, you're facing three creatures already. And cards like Great Dane, like Great Dane is an A plus on the play versus Mono Green. And like an F on the draw. Like it's not that bad on the draw, but like on the play, it's really, really, really strong to play a turn three Great Dane. Like it just locks up the game a lot. On the draw, it doesn't do that much. Like they just they can just fight it because if you're on the draw, it, yeah, it, it just, they, they get to play a three drop anyway. Like if you play Ray Dane on turn three and the play, their turn three might just be go. Right? They might not have any cards to play. Like play play a tap land go, and that is just is just phenomenal for you. That's right. Again, we're hoping my opponent is playing an aggro deck here, right? But that was the hope when we submitted the deck that we submitted. Right? This could have been. Could have been something else. And it's the reason it's like, like Skyclade Operation and not something else is because we expected people to play aggro decks, right? I added a portable hole, uh, so this is always the hope.
Do I want to play this as a 3 1? I mean, I think I want to get rid of that wolf token to begin with. Then I either want to play the adversary as a 3 1, or I just want to keep Fateful Absence up. I think I want to play a 3 1, though. Because, like, it's, it's going to attack as a 4 2 next turn. I might even pump it before. Okay. That's kind of annoying. But I have plenty of removal left for that. But like now they get to play like chariot and stuff. Okay, so what's my plan here? What is my plan? They activate Chariot, I kill Chariot, attack with everything. Doesn't sound too great, but also doesn't sound awful. Yeah, that Snake Skin Veil really destroyed me. <laughs> I wish I had a land here. Because like then I'd be able to Apparition. I think I'm gonna lose this game. If it wasn't for that veil, I think I would like be a super favorite to win. But now I think I'm pretty far back. I mean, I'm winning the life department, but like I don't have that many flyers in my deck. I don't have that many ways of pushing through. I mean, I could just draw a wall and win the game from that, right? But like the separation is not gonna be that effective because what they have is like tokens. If they play like Renan Seven. So I could Skyclave the Tracker, put the counter on Adversary and attack. I might trade for these two though, which I don't really want to do. I mean, I guess I don't mind. I suppose I could just... Uh... Like, I don't want to trade for this two. They'll draw a card. But also I want to spend my mana. This is fine. Like I killed their, their mana producer. I got my Usher online because right now it's kind of offline. Because they have a 3-3 three, three and a 1-2, so it doesn't do anything so right now, but and I do have the player. Like this makes it yeah, I don't know what was right or not, but I feel like I have to hope they draw badly here, or I have to draw phenomenal, phenomenally. Okay, that's not too bad. This is too bad. Like now, I really needed something here. I can't attack because they just double block your two tokens. Like, I think that's too bad for me. Or sorry, just block with one token. Now I'm basically dead, I think, unless I draw exactly Maul or Legion Angel. I had a lot of life, but... What do I even want to do? Just make a big usher in the hopes that I'll draw them all and kill them? Doesn't seem unreasonable. 
Like, also, if they start attacking at some point, I could draw a removal spell. I kill the big tracker, and then I got to bash. Like, I have a lot of life to work with, but they're dealing a lot of damage, so... I'm gonna activate Faceless Haven and attack with a bunch of things. Uh, I mean, that would be a lot of damage. Okay, this is good. As long as they don't draw, like, Blizzard Brawl. If they draw Blizzard Brawl, I'm super dead. Sort of super dead anyway, but we'll see. I need something good. Maul is lethal now, so it's like it's plus two, then plus two from the aspirants. I think I only have one Maul in my deck though, but we'll see. Should probably chump that now. Pretty big. Okay, this is pretty big too. The one counter here, I think having five definitely is important, and maybe I'll put the other counter here. Maybe I put this for 6 toughness, but... Maybe I spread the love a little bit. Yeah, this can block a 3-3 three, three or like a little bit. This is already big enough to be lethal with, with Maul. I'm gonna take the damage here now, though. Let's see if that could adjust that. I'm gonna take 11. Eh, not great. I could block with the apparition. I think this might buy me an extra turn. Oh, this is just way over lethal here. But... Let's see, maybe they want to attack. Like, if I just pass the turn, I'm not gonna get anywhere. It's gonna play the other side, the... The sphere. So, like, I block, block, block. You have five blockers. It's not actually lethal. I miscounted. I messed up. Yeah, it's not. They don't actually have lethal. They, I mean, they get to pump something else. So, how many attacks do they have? 10. So, 5 will get through. Like, I block the 5 biggest ones. Let's see. They do 16. Yeah, they don't actually kill me. Never mind. I messed up. So, maybe I can win. Alright, now I'm dead. We just gained 13 life. <laughs> this is again an unfortunate game, I think. Like, I don't... yeah. That turn with like the tree speaker in turn 1 and the veil on, and the creature and the veil on turn 2 were just, was really just too devastating. And like the chariot. Their sequence was so good. I don't like the tree speaker very much because I feel like it doesn't accelerate into it that much in that deck because you don't have that many ones. Right, so most of the time you just play it on turn 1, then you play a 2 on turn 2, then on turn 3 you get to escalate into a 4 if you have that, but if you had a turn 2 Cobra, that would have been the same. Right, so I don't like it that much, but if you're using it to cast Veil, then I think it... then like it's when it really shines. Play this. Eh, I, don't got, I think I'm gonna play here sure, because I get to block. Like, even if they play the Luminarch, I get to block and kill it. Okay. Probably 
probably should just play an adversary here because I have them all. So like, depending on what they do, I can just go all attack and like that would win me the game. If they're playing something similar to Race Out Desertion, they didn't have Apparition. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do this and just like hope that we don't have something. Cause like this will win me the game by itself if they don't have anything. And like being on the draw, you kinda need some things to go right. It also buys me some time to sack my clue and stuff. Okay, promising. <laughs> so sack clue and play two familiars or just play a big adversary. I think I'm kind of into second clue here. Should attack first, obviously. Not give them the information that this is what I have, but. No. Oh, okay. It's an unconventional choice, I think. Yeah, I could just try to leave this spellbinder. Do I care about spellbinder? Not really, but like it uses my mana and then like grows my familiars. Yeah. Like the next turn I can play the adversary for three. And then that will be lights out, right? Like we've gotten to a point where I've gained so much life that I can just be moving them all around too. So like even if they kill my adversary. They have no card. Yeah, they're super dead. Oh my god, I forgot. <laughs> Tilt. I might want to play this anyway. I could just attack with the Faceless Haven here. I think playing this is good though. Oh my god. If I just play this, attack with everything. Like they have, they can block, block, double block. Yeah, this can go too bad for me. I, mean, I don't care if they get a 3-3. I'm gonna kill the, the thingy. Wait, why? Oh, they chump chump. Okay. All right, all right. We're getting there. Two more, I think. Yeah, two more. Ooh, I'm first. Here, this is one of the hands where I think I just make a 1-1. One, one. Right, rather than playing a 2-2, two, two, like playing under one of those. Because I think the added material is more important than like the extra damage I'll get on the turn on turn three. Like then on turn three I can go Usher again and make another token. No, I'm just up a token for one damage, which I think is worth it. No, 
or this development, it wasn't worth it because I didn't draw two drops that I could play, so I, I would have just made a token on this turn anyway. I feel defeated already. Should I play Skyclave Apparition next turn? I mean, I'm gonna make a token now. I was thinking they killed it. I should have done that. But... It's not too bad. But yeah, I feel like I, I already can't win. with all these lands. I think I should play this. Like, it's only good versus, like, the Celestials or whatever. I mean, hopefully they don't have anything. Oh, they have something already. They have a lot of things already. Like if they have a land here, they can just go Epiphany, Epiphany. How do I beat this one? <laughs> I don't. We'll see, we'll see. This though again, the like Ray Dane and stuff would have been much better than, than Skyclave Apparition, but Okay, we got rid of the Epiphany, at least. But like the tokens are just so good versus us. Oh my god, they have another epiphany. So what are they gonna do? I think I should just attack. Like I don't wanna expose my thingy to a removal spell. Like they can copy a removal spell here. What do they have? Not lands. So certainly at least one removal. This is not what I was expecting. I think this is gonna be it for our run. I don't see myself winning this game. Like our draw, look at the cards that we drew this game. We drew Portable Hole, Fateful Absence, and Apparition, and Lands. That was basically it. Obviously we put all of those in our deck, right? It, it's, it's partially our fault because we expected. Huh. We expected more aggro decks, but. I need to draw the Sun Gold Sentinel to exile this memory deluge. I think that's the only way I really win. I mean, I'm, I'm not faithful in, in any capacity still, but. I have to play this. I think.
Yeah, how am I gonna beat these birds? Just the birds plus the seven like flashback spell. I'm I'm dead. If they play it, yeah, I, I'm just super dead. I'm just gonna cool team. Alright, so we didn't get there. Should we change anything in our deck? Should we just try again the way it is? I feel like I maybe don't want. There's too many fateful absences. Like I think portable hole might just be better than a fateful absence, but we can add like two spell binders maybe. All right, let's try it like this. So that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash pvdr and there you can support my work a little bit more and get some extra perks on top of that. And special thank you to my biggest supporters, Adam Racy, Adam Camilleri, Foxy, Fernando Vizeu, Jan Jam, Igor Petrov, Jack Hart, Joey, Juan Chao, Kelvin Peng, Kevin Massey, Lawson, Mattia Giardini, Nate, uh, Safir Weapon, uh, Sylvia Leticia, Stu Cameron, Thomas Pocorni, and Dimitri. I really appreciate the support, and I'll see you next video.